Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Ishin Lizard 95mm brushless micro quadcopter. First I would like to thank Banggood for sending me this quadcopter for a review. This is the FR Sky version. Inside the box first we get the instruction manual. Ishin did a great job with this instruction manual as they did with the last quadcopters that I reviewed from them including the Ishin Aurora 90 and 100 mm quadcopters. We get in a three cells 550 mAh 40C rated LiPo battery, hex driver and a screwdriver, some rubber bands, pads and this adapter that enables you to connect the flight controller to a micro USB cable, one set of spare propellers, a USB cable, some Velcros for the battery, and last but not least, the quadcopter itself. In the center of the quadcopter, we can see the Ishin Mini Cube, which I've reviewed, and it provides a great all in one solution. On the back, we have a LED indicator. The motors are 1104 6000 kV motors from Ishin. And the all-in-one camera is one of the new things in this quadcopter because it's selectable between 25 to 100 milliwatts. So in the Ishii Aurora 90 and the Aurora 100, the camera was only 25 milliwatts. So this one should provide you with a better video range. The battery connector is an XT30 connector, which is not rare, but it's not a standard connector so I recommend you to buy a couple of spare XT30 connectors and then you can either make an adapter with your existing battery or you can replace the GST connector with an XT30 one. Making an adapter is easy and I think it would have been nice of Ishin to include uh, an already made adapter with this kit because the GST connector is much more common than the XT30. You might argue that you need uh, this XT30 connectors with a three cells battery, but if you're gonna use it with two cells battery, I think the GST is gonna be just fine. The weight of the Ishin Lizard without the battery is almost 66 grams. And if we add the 550 milliampere hour three cells battery, it's almost 110 grams. Almost the same weight as my new Ishin Fire 80, which I recently built, which is also a small beast and is capable of flying three cells LiPo batteries as well. From other reviews that I've read and seen online, it's highly recommended to use these soft mounts for the motors because from what I've seen, this will improve the flight capabilities of this micro brushless quadcopter. The included screws are a little bit too short, so I'm going to use the longer ones with this soft mount. Make sure that the screws that you're using are not too long because they might damage the motor. So now the hard part is over. I finished mounting these soft mounts on the Lizard. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to flash the latest version of Betaflight and then bind it to my Terranis. Unfortunately for us, the boot pads are located here on the bottom of the flight controller and you cannot access it unless you're going to take apart the frame. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this top part of the frame and then I will try to access it from the bottom part. So I had to disassemble the top part. Also, I had to remove the bottom spacers and now the bottom of the flight controller is revealed and I can show these pads in order to get it to DFU mode. Once it's on DFU, you will hear this annoying beep. You can see now it's on DFU. You have to choose Omnibus. Then choose the latest version. And load firmware online. And now you can flash the firmware. After it's done, it will reboot itself and now it's out of DFU mode. Binding the lizard is done by putting your Taranis on D8 mode, channels 1 to 8, hit bind. And then just plug the battery 
while holding this button on top. You can see that this LED indicator has been turned off, which means that Taranis was buying successfully. Now you can just exit it. And you can see once we plug again the battery, we get an RSSI indication and the lizard was successfully buying. The camera all-in-one VTX supports 48 channels. On the right side, we get the channel indication and this one is the frequency group. Let's turn it on. Switching the channel is done by short pressing this button over here. Then you can see that the LED indicator moves down. So it starts from one, then all the way down to, down to eight. And if you long press this button, you can see that the blue LED indicator changes. For the first one is A, and it goes all the way down to F. And inside the instruction manual, you can see the frequency table. So if I want to set it for A7, I have to set this on seven. And now I have to go all the way back to the first one. And now it's on A7, which stands for 5860, which is the channel that I normally use. In order to change it from PAL to NTC, you have to press the front switch for about two seconds, and then it will change. And in order to change between 100 milliwatt and 25 milliwatt mode, you will have to press these two buttons together, which is not very convenient. And then you can see after you successfully do it, these two LED indicators will be turned on. Now it's on 100 milliwatt mode. Now the bad news is that when you disconnect the LiPo battery and you reconnect it, it's back to 25 milliwatt mode. So it kind of sucks. So each time that you will plug the battery, you will have to change it back to 100 milliwatt if you want to enjoy a better video range. On the bright side, the frequency that you last set is saved. In order to secure the receiver antenna, I used this silicone glue. And I also added these O-rings on the spacers in order to soft mount the flight controller. Since I flashed the flight controller, now I have to reconfigure it. So first we have to go to UR3 and enable the serial RX. Hit save and reboot. I choose to use motor stop, don't spin the motors when it's armed, and then you have to change the PPM RF input into ser uh, serial based receiver, and then choose SMS. That's of course if you're using an FR Sky model. Make sure that the remote controller is behaving as you want it to behave, so all the channels are configured correctly. Finally, I need to configure the flight modes. You can use the, your favorite settings and the last thing I need to do is to take it for a test flight. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about this monster feel free to ask it in the comment section below and see you on my next videos. Goodbye.